Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Omid Yomi Shir here in Avashalom with Shemesh. Welcome to everyone, YouTube, Torah, anytime, or anybody else that listens to us and watches us. We are in Ein Aleph Omud Beis, in the top of the page, not the very top of the page. We're right here in the Mishnah. Ezu Neshech, Ein Aleph Omud Beis. Ezu Neshech, Eze Yofi. Beautiful Perek. And let's just, you know, yeah, dive into the Mishnah. Says the Holy, Holy Mishnah. Let's just give again a small introduction, which is actually also a summary for what we've been learning before. What does it mean? Lifsok means to set a price. One is not allowed to go to his friend in the market before there is a stable, mark my words, before there's a stable rate that was established by the local or even beyond the local merchants. As long as you don't know what is the regular going rate of the schoira, and you go to your friend who is a wheat merchant, and he doesn't yet have wheat, you know he will be, be getting wheat later on, okay? And you tell him, listen, mister, I'm now deciding with you, let's do some what they call pre-sale, pre-buy, pre-purchase. I'd like to get from you later on in the year, the, I don't know, I don't know one ton of chitim, of wheat, for, I don't know, for a certain amount of money, one ton for 100,000. And we know that now the price, even though there's no rate yet, it's cheaper than it will be later. Because usually things, there's inflation. And later on will be more expensive. So let's say now it's Tishrei, the beginning of the year. And I tell you, now I want to get from you price X, and I'm giving you the money now. Ooh, that's very alluring for the merchant. Is actually getting something which is like a loan. It's not a loan, but it's like a loan because he now has cash, right? And at the same time, I know that later I will keep the old price, which means let's now decide on a fixed price. Leaf stock is like to fix. Let's fix the price of a hundred thousand. Let's say, even though later on I'm gonna get them poor in time in five months' time, and that will be three hundred thousand. I want to keep the price of 100,000. That is forbidden. One's not supposed to do that because it's Ribis de Abono. Okay? Although this is not Ribis de Oraisa because it's not a loan. Yeah, it's not a, not, not a loan, not a L O A N. It's not a Mamish loan. It's the way it's done is Mekah. It's a deal. And also, we're not sure that the money, that the price will go up. So it's not Ribis Ktsutsa. But on the other hand, Midora Bono, that's scaringly similar to Ribis. Why? Because the merchant actually is getting cash now. He's enjoying the cash. It's like a loan. Now he can do stuff with it. And the buyer, the buyer, on the other hand, says, oh, I'm waiting for my money. Or for the merchant, for the merchant dies, I'm without my money for so long. I miss my money. A garnatar, it's called. Yeah. And therefore, I deserve to get something worth what? 300 for 100. That reduction is like Ribis. Because it's so similar to Ribis, that's not allowed. When is it allowed? One of two conditions. Condition number one, Yotza Shar. I'm continuing the Mishnah. Yotza Shar Hoiskin. Once there's a stable, and it will be discussed today what's called stable. You know about stable economy? Yeah. So, so Yotza Hashar, once the Shar, the rate has gone out, has been decided, and we know that the rate is a set rate, and by everybody else, you can get now this amount of wheat for 100,000, let's say, Koiskin. He is allowed to, those two people are allowed to set the price with all the other conditions I mentioned before. Why? Continues the Mishnah. De, not the AFLP, you should really say, de AFLP shen leze, yesh leze. Although, let's say I want to buy wheat from a friend, Reuven. Reuven doesn't have wheat. But Shimon Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zvulun, and Pachachovsky, they all have wheat, yeah? So in other words, because I... Because he actually can go next door or can go to the next town. The Gemara said later, Kumpadisa to uh, Healy and Shini. Uh, uh, Healy and uh, no, uh, no, I, I got confused. But kids, can go to a nearby place, yeah, and get the wheat. So it's considered as if the deal was already done. It's as if the wheat is already there. Yeah. In other words, although because the wheat is available by other stores, I decide to do business with you because I like you, but I can get the same price by everybody else. 
and either you, Reuven, it's a mechlokis before in the Gemara, the Rishonim, don't remember, but yeah, either you or I, we can actually go to next door and get that wheat right now. So it's considered as if the deal was done already, which means as if the merchandise, the wheat is in my possession, I'm the buyer, and if the wheat is in my possession, that's not called ribis. It became expensive in my house. That's not a problem. That's why it's allowed. And really, this is a development of another halacha. And before we continue, I'll tell you the other one. The other second way that this deal would be allowed is simply if the person himself has the wheat in his, his, in, in his uh, store, yeah, in his store room, anywhere. In other words, let's say I buy from Reuven. Reuven, give me 100000 The wheat is in his house, in his store. It's there, right there, nice and fresh and crisp, yeah? And the fact that there was no Meshicha done yet, there was no Kenyan yet, but the wheat's there. The wheat is there. Maybe it's in a storage room in another town, but Lamaisa, he has the wheat. So conceptually, it's just technicality that the wheat worth 100000 is not by me. So I paid for 100000 and it's Ke'ilu, I received 100000 I, there was no Mashiach, there was no Kenyan. We mentioned before, and we'll mention later, there's a concept called Mishapora. What's Mishapora? Because if we regret the deal, any of the sides would regret the deal, the other side can take him to Bezin, and Bezin will give him a curse. Hmm. That means there's something already obligating went on over here. So although it's not a real Kenyan, but we're very close to a Kenyan, there's a Lachik Nafkamina, and because we're so close to the actual uh, uh, deal being done, being over with, that is okay. It's considered as if I already received 100000 worth in my house, and the fact that I will only technically receive them five, six months later, and then it will be worth so-and-so, doesn't make a difference anymore. That is the cool of Chazal. So now, continues the Mishnah into the next piece. The next piece of the Mishnah is the case of Yesh Loi. What happens if the merchant, the, the seller, has it in his own house? Says the Mishnah. Let's say that person, that one I want to buy the wheat from, he was the first one from the harvesters. He's the one who did the first harvest. That's the opposite case from the Rasha. It's not that he doesn't have and others have. Now it's the other way. He has and others don't. He was the first one to actually have wheat in his possession. Everyone runs to him. So there's no rate yet. There's no set rate. But he has the wheat. He has the wheat in his place. Poisekim al-Godish. means that although the wheat is in its very, very primal, very first kind of stage, it's just Godish. It's a heap of wheat that wasn't yet ready to be sold nicely. Although it's the first stage, it's already considered as ready enough to have the Kenyan and not have a problem of ribis because we consider that as something that can be already be sold conceptually, even though we won't normally be sold with all the chef and all the disgusting things. But Be'etzem, it's something, the Gemara will discuss later, Mechlokas Rabu Shmuel, how far it has to be from being ready. But Be'etzem, I have something that I can sell and that's not considered ribis. Next case, Rala Ovit Shal Anovim. What does that mean? Let's say I want to buy wine from you, and all you have is not wine yet. You have to have a finished product in order for us to do poiskin, to finish that deal without ribis issues. Sorry. And let's say all you have is an avit of grapes. Avit is like a big vat. Avit, vat. Yeah, it's a big, uh, big um, barrel. A yeah, barrel, maybe, yeah. And all the anovim, all the grapes are being contained over there, and they get very hot and ready in order to have the wine press, to be in the wine press, to have the wine pressed away from them. Although this is a definitely early stage in the life of the wine, it's still grapes, but the grapes are about to become wine. It's considered wine enough that if I sell at that point, it's not called ribis. It's called the done, the deal was done, and I got the hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. What happens later, it's kilo happened in the house of the buyer. Very similarly in the Matan Shel Zesim, Matan is also a place where you put the Zesim. What are Zesim? Olives. If you want to buy olive oil, and the olive oil is still in the form of olives, but the olives are very ready, they're in the Matan. Matan is also a place where they collect all the olives in order to press them into oil. And the next one, Vala Beit Sim Shel Beitzim or bitzim. Beitzim either means beitz and egg, or bitza means like a marsh, like a muddy place. What does that mean? Beitzim shaliyotzer means when a person creates a clay. We're talking here about a clay vessel. Let's say you want to buy a nice clay vase, yeah, for your wife's birthday. 
Yeah, she likes clay, okay? And back then, clay was much more common. You want to buy something of clay and set the old price, the same story, and the stage in which the clay, the clay of clay is holding is just a very, um, how do you call it? It's a very, it's oh. a, either it's an egg shape, it's it's like a one big mold of um, of of mud, yeah, of mud, which wasn't yet shaped and designed properly. Beitza means an egg. It's either egg shaped before I actually cut it and design it. The very very first stage of the clay, the life of a of a of a clay vessel is an egg shaped kind. Or bitza means a marsh, yeah, in Hebrew, and it's like a mud. Whatever that means, it's the same thing. It's one piece of mud shaped like an egg, which means it's not yet a clay, but because it's about to be a clay pretty soon. It's already considered that the guy has a clay in his possession, in his workshop, and what I buy from him now is considered as a done deal, and whatever happens later, that's already passed, passed the deal, and the money went up in my possession, not in his possession. That's the name of the game. Dallas Seed, you want to, yeah, let's say you want to buy lime. Yeah, you work in building, she puts the candy, man, you want to buy some lime. Mishishik oi bakivshan. Shik oi bakivshan means... Once they put the, the lime, in other words, they take the, 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 the stones, whatever they make lime from, from those stones, from those rocks, they put them in the kibshan in the furnace together with the, all the firewood. Once it's there, it's already about to be ready, close enough to the final product that it's considered as yesh lo. It's considered that he has already the item in his possession, same as before. Now, what about zebel? Oh, let's say you want to buy fertilizer. The fertilizer is manure. Manure is dung, and that's what, you know, what the animal does. And you want to actually buy some zebel, your farmer. You want to buy fertilizer, you know, organic fertilizer. Let's call it nice name, organic fertilizer. Yeah, that's how they call it in Hebrew, zebel organic. So, and I want to buy some zebel, but the guy doesn't yet have zebel. You know, his cows didn't, you know, finish eating it. According to Tanakama, if I want to buy zebel from your friend, the entire year, although the zevel is more ready to be used in the summer, after the whole winter, people stepped on it. I'm sorry, yeah? In other words, it was mixed with the water or rain and all that. In the summer, the zevel is nice and ready to use, right? So although zevel is not really available all year round, however, Tanakama says one is allowed to be poisek, to decide and set the price with his friend, even though his friend doesn't have zevel, and other people don't, I mean, oh, some other may, other people may have Zevel, but the, the Achronim explained, the idea is you're allowed to buy Zevel all year round. Why? Because Zevel is something really cheap and people readily give it away. That, it is worth money, but because Zevel is very available and very, it's less available in the winter and in the summer, that's true. But if anybody does have Zevel, he'd readily sell it very easily, more easily than other products, right? And therefore, that's considered something that is available all year round. It's not just, you know, fancy commodity that people only have some time of year, like, you know, wheat or barley that have their seasons. The Zevel yeah, may be more ready in the winter, in the summer, but it's not, con it's not conceptually important. That's Tanakama. Rabbi Yossi Oemel, Ein Pois Ken Ala Zevel, Elem Ken Hoi Solo Zevel. But Ashpa says, Rabbi Yossi, no. Rabbi Yossi says, no, no, no. I don't believe that it's good enough to say Zevel is generally available. No, Zevel, it can only be sold in that way, of poiskin, without chashash ribis, if the person has devil in his own ashpa, in his own uh, bin, in his own, uh, the place where they developed the devil. Back then, ashpa wasn't like today, the garbage can. Ashpa was a place where in the back of your house, behind your house, and that's a place where the devil fertilizes better and better. I guess, I don't know, more rain, more flies, whatever happens there. Yeah? Okay, Beseder, fine. The chachamim and tirim. Chachomim allow. Chachomim allow it all year round. Now, the question is, what's the difference between Tanakama and Chachomim, right? Because both Tanakama and Chachomim say you can do it all year round. So there is a difference whether it's all year round or just in the summer. Yeah. In other words, Chachomim allow you that Chachomim allow it by the summer. Yeah. Because summer is when the devil is really, re is really ready. Yeah. And that is better than. Uh, than uh, one second, and in the winter. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. In other words, there are three. There are three opinions. Either you can sell the zevel all year round, regardless whatever happens. Abayesi says no. Only a real zevel owner can sell the zevel. Otherwise, no. 
Otherwise, there, there are no Zevil is just any other product, says Rabbi Yossi. We're going to see later on why. And according to Chachomim, they say you can sell the Zevil, providing that it's the high season of Zevil, where it's more available and ready, that's in the summer. The animals, they always produce what they produce. But through the winter, the Zevil gets better and better. In the summer, it's more of a finished product. That will be discussed later. Give me one second. We're going to finish Mishnah anyhow soon, and then you can have time for questions. Oh, that's interesting. What happens at the end of the Mishnah? What happens if things w work the wrong way around? Mm -mm -mm. What happens if there's a deflation? Mm. He was hoping, they were hoping that I'm giving you 100,000 in Tishrei. We all know that Cheshman, Kislev, Tevis, Shvat, Oda, it's going to climb up. You know, that's what all the analysts say and all the whatever, all the fancy, you know, economic websites. They say that, you know, January and April, March will be worth much more. And that's what they're hoping. I'm giving you money now. And that's allowed. Why is it allowed? Either he has a product himself or his neighbor has a product and there was already a set uh, rate. What happens if all of a sudden, oi, things went down? <laughs> Instead of being worth 100,000, in a few months' time, there will be deflation. The market went down, Ukraine, not Ukraine, Shmukraine, whatever. And what happens now? It's below. It went, you know, the graph went downwards. So now, what are we going to say? Are we going to say that he sticks to the original price? Because what did they say? They said, let's stick to 100,000, right? So I would say, not more, no less. Says Tanakama, no. Upoisikima kishara gavoa. Upoisikima kishara gavoa means as follows. He has the right, meaning, who's he? The buyer obviously wants to gain something here. He wants to have a low price. If he says, let's stick to the 100,000, to the current price, which I'm giving you now, the catch I gave you now, and then it's going to go down, he came out, he lost. Everyone's going to laugh at him. Everybody else is going to go to the store in four months' time and buy it for less right? And he buys it for more, right? Because he originally paid more than, let's say most people are going to buy it in four months' time, Nagid, yeah? So does he. And if he sticks to the original price, the original price actually was more expensive, was higher. So now, he, he has to specify that. If he wants to not lose the buyer, the buyer should be very misleading word. Shara gavo means cheaper. Why? Gavo means high. Why is higher cheaper? That you can buy more for less, right? That's what it means cheaper. When it's cheaper, right? Yeah, you don't buy four uh, lollipops for this. You buy five for one check and not four. That's Gavo. You, got, you get more for the same. Gavo just means cheap. So basically, uh, in other words, if we didn't specify anything, then the seller can say, hey, then what? The seller can say, I'm selling you for 100,000, hey, 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 and not for 80,000, which it is now. Unless it's specified. If the buyer is smart and wants to secure himself and make sure he always gets the better deal, he has to specify that. He has to specify and say, listen, if the price goes up, we're staying with 100000 The price goes down, we'll go down to the lower price. He can do that, but he should specify that. And otherwise, okay, but if he didn't specify that, then the, the, the moicher, the seller, can go back and it's not Mishapara. That he says, no, we fixed on 100,000 and you didn't specify anything. We'll stick to 100,000, even though it's 80. Ah, you don't like it? Mm, tough, right? So either side, obviously the one losing, can, can, can stop the deal. Yeah. Or the buyer would say, actually, I don't want the deal. But if they specified, they have to specify that. Otherwise, yeah, he can tell him, we fixed the price. I give me 100,000, says the, says the seller. Don't give me 80 that it's not worth. We decide on a hundred. That's what Tanakama says. Rabbi Yudah Oimer, I'll, I promise you questions will come soon. Rabbi Yudah Oimer, Rabbi Yudah says, no, Afal Pishuloi Posikim Yishar Gavoa, even though they did not specify and said, I always want a better deal, I always want the cheaper price, either cheap is in Tishrei when I give the money, or the cheaper of uh, Tevis Shvat much later when I get the product, he, even if they didn't specify that, the, the, the buyer can tell the seller, then because then, no, I want the cheaper price. I want, let's say it was 100, now it's worth 80,000. Wow, that's a big uh, decline. Give me for 80, or give me my money back. I want cheaper, whatever is cheaper, or my money back, even though they did not specify it. Why? Because it goes without saying that that was the name of the game. Obviously, 
of once ribis is allowed, once it's ribis the bonon is allowed, and it is allowed in this case, either yeshloi or yotrashar, whatever the case may be, goes without saying, that says Rabbi Yuda, that obviously the only reason why I gave money and waited so patiently five, six months for the schoyer to come, and you're playing up with my money all the time, why is that? Obviously, needless to say, I wanted the better deal. The, I only gave you 100 and fixed 100, even though I didn't speak about the lower price. Obviously, I w- my idea was that it's going to go up to 120, 130, and I will stay with 100. I did not think that it's going to go down and you'll give me the lower price. The whole idea is that I'm going to gain. That goes without saying, says the buyer, and that's what Tribuna says. I don't know what the halacha is. Unfortunately, I owe you halacha also from the previous sugya. I have to sit down with Shulchan Aruch. But Lamaisa, according to the Ein Mishpat, it sounds like Poise Kimoi, like Tanakama. So they have to specify. But if they didn't specify, they know. But Rabira says no. Even if they didn't specify, it goes without saying that the customer can say, I always want a better price. That was the whole game. That was the whole Zach. That's what Rabira holds. Tanakama holds no. Tanakama holds no. He can go back on, on his word because that's called going back on his words. In other words, if he didn't specify that I always want a better price, yeah. Then the seller can say, ah, oh, now I set you 100,000, now it's 80, okay? So now give me 100. Why? Because we fixed it on 100. And he's, he's allowed to, the, the seller. That's the comment. Rabita says no. Okay. Questions? There are two people with questions. Back soon. I just want to point out, not exactly to answer your question, but to the point you just made now, it's a joke, but... The Maisa, the reason why Chachomim allow it, the, either by Yesh Loy or by his friend has it, because it's all Rebis is the Rabbonon. Had it been Rebis the Raisa, Chachomim wouldn't have allowed it. Chachomim allowed Rebis the Rabbonon because they're the ones that said it's not allowed. Heim Omu, Veheim Omu, right? Chachomim established this is Rebis, not the Torah. Mid Raisa, it's okay. Since Chachomim established the Rebis, they also said in this case it's okay because the Mishapora sets it as if it already came to the house. Okay, that's why. Says the Heli Gimoen. Omar, um, very quick. Weiter. Okay. Omar Basi, Omar Bi Yochanan, En Poiskin Al Shal Shebashuk. Well, look at, listen to this. Says Omar Basi, B'Shem Al Bi Yochanan, if the market in the shuk, in if the, excuse me, the rate went out in the market, there is a marketplace. Reuven Shimon and Levi and Yehuda are standing in some imagine of village. I'm saying the, the 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 example on purpose. There's a nice village kibbutz, you know, shuk marketplace. Five, six, seven merchants all sell for more or less the same price. The shah, the shah went out. They all sell for the same thing. Still, you're not allowed to do that deal. You can't go to Yehuda, who doesn't have the whatever you want to buy, the plastic ducks, whatever you want to buy. They have and he doesn't have, and they set already a price. You're not allowed to buy from him. It seems to be exactly against the Mishnah. What Rabbi Yochanan is trying to say is that the shah that went by the shuk is not stable enough. Oh. He's not arguing with the Mishnah, as we're going to see later. I just want to calm you down. Rabbi Yochanan says, not every, not every market price is stable. It's not a stable rate to already consider it as a good rate. And I saw a very nice explanation in the Mishnah. There's a very nice question in the Mishnah of Rabbi Gimbo. I don't remember the name. Uh, he says like this. The point is as follows. What's the idea that, why is it that I can give you cash now, you don't have wheat by you, your neighbor and the other neighbor next door, next town, they have wheat that's good enough. Why is it good enough? You don't have the wheat, but in two minutes or two days, ah, very, very, in two hours or today with one phone call, you can already get it, deliver it very quickly. It's kilo already here. Oh, but if the market is very unstable, ever heard of unstable economies in your life? No, of course not. So the inflation goes crazy, you know, right? So maybe by the time I give him the money, and by the time he'll manage to, let's say, wait a day or two until his son finishes getting married, the price is going to go up so quickly that that's not called stable. You can't say for this 100000 the next door neighbor will give it to me right away. Because before you say Jack Robinson, already the other one will be worth more. So Rabbi is looking for stable economy, stable rate, to say that that's allowed to buy from X who doesn't have the merchandise, assuming his neighbor will have the merchandise for this price, Still for the next few days or so. That's the concept of Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan still sounds strange because Rabbi Yochanan says the market. <laughs> so Rabbi Yochanan, the rate of the market is not good enough. So what is good enough? Omla Rabzeir al Rabasi. Rabasi quoted Rabbi Yochanan. Rabzeir is challenging the messenger. He's asking Rabasi, 
Omar Biochen and a filo Kedurmus as there. Look at this Durmus. Durmus was a shopping center. Don't tell vegetarians. It was a very big Italy's God of the Rav. It was a very big marketplace of meat. Very fancy, big, you know, a lot of different, you know, shook of meat, your whole meat market, the big one. Even let's say you have a bigger market, yeah, with a lot of shops and they all sell for the same. Even then he wouldn't he would say that it's unstable. Omerle, no, no, no. You tell me what's more stable? A small market with four or five merchandise uh, uh, merchants or four hundred? Stable is the four hundred. A small Macaulet has you know, has to gain more money, more inflation. He has to get yeah, the Shanka and the bigger one, you know, the big supermarkets they gain more than the small ones usually. So now Omerle, only the small towns, the villages, when they all when they don't have a lot of schoiro. And therefore, they have to up the price all the time to make money because they're very small. The small market has usually is more expensive. The ayu because the shar the rate is not kavua is unstable. Break the gemara, but a big one like the Durmus, no. You go to the fancy, you know, urban shopping center, the mall, no. That is the chosh of a place. Break the gemara ulemande salika daitin miikoro. According to what we originally thought, the Amar Rabbi Yochanan the Filo Kedurmus says that. In the Havamina, when Rabbi Zera asked the question, he thought the Rabbi Yochanan, even when it comes to an urban shopping center like a Dulmus, even there it's unstable. El Masnisi in Diktani has a Mishnah. According to that understanding in Rabbi Yochanan, how did you exactly read the Mishnah? The Mishnah says, Salkad, yeah, the Masnisi in Diktani says the Mishnah, and Poiskan Lapers, Achet Sashar, right? Who says you don't pass, don't pass it. <laughs> You don't set the price. You don't that do the, you don't do the deal of prepayment and staying with the old price. Yotza shar poiskin. The Mishnah says once the rate is out, stable rate, you are poisik. Yeah. How do you explain the Mishnah? According to the Havam, that even an urban uh, 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 place with a lot of shops, with a big shop like the Italy's, what did, what did Rabbi Yechonon think? How would Rabbi Yechonon explain the Mishnah? But yeah, how stable does the market have to be according to Rabbi Yechonon, who is very finicky about very, very big stable market? What is stable in the eyes of Rabbi Yechonon? Because the Mishnah said, star markets are stable enough to be able to be poisic with one guy who doesn't have the merchandise. Answers the Gemara, the Chiti, the Achlebi, the Arbi. We all know what that means. The Moshech Taritfe, which means, Achlevi V'arvi means, oh, mega, mega, mega big. Achlevi V'arvi means, Achlevi are the places where the Balabatim, all the big stores, all, not even the stores, the wholesalers, the, 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 the what's the name, the wholesalers, the, the farmers, those who have the big amounts and they sell to all the, sh- all the small shops, they all open the stores in one go, and the Arvi, Arvi, you should know this word appears a lot of in the Gemara, Arvi is a boat, a ship, a big one, a ship, yeah? So once they go to the, the kids, so once the big ships go and they start moving around the schoira from the big guys to the towns, that is, wow, that is already not a small guy in the, in the, in the village. The village is before that, you have to understand. It's not just location, it's a stage. We look at the market village as something from the tourism, but back then the villager would sell in his own place before he would sell to the big to the big to the big crowd. That's why I understand it. Once already the all open all the markets to all the big boats and everybody's buying, that is so big, so so humongous, and that's called a stable rate. And by that rate, there's gonna go for a long time. So there are three levels. Yeah, the real big, big one, which for sure is called Moshuch Tar Eight Fei. The Shah stays for longer. Yeah, if it's a stable economy, we're not talking about, I don't know, I remember Israel uh, 30 years ago when I was a kid, uh, yeah, 40 years ago, very, very, very high inflation. If we don't talk about an instable economy, usually unstable, usually, yeah, when the market is open and big and everybody's buying in big amounts, then already it's considered as mashik, the time that the shah stays is a long time, and that's the kalbi, that's the achle bivalvi. Second stage is what the one in town, which is the big place, but not as big as the whole world, like the, the ships. And the smallest one is the village. Lemaisa, Lemaisa, as far as I remember, the aloha is even the Durmus, even the, the big merchant in town. He already established in his shopping center. There are enough shops in town that sell for that amount, even though it's not as huge as the one in the boat. That's called stable enough. 
Now more of the same. How stable is the is the rate? Ain poiskin alapeos achiotoshal. Okay, that's a Mishnah, right? You're only allowed to decide with your friend, give me that amount of wheat for X amount of money, and let's stay with the current price, even though you don't have, but others have. So it's ki'ilu all done. Yotza shal poiskin. Once the rate is out, it's stable, you already can set the price. Athel pishenaze, yesh lezeh, all very nice. Even though one guy doesn't have it, all his neighbors or people nearby or in other towns, they have. Now, new information. Oh, let's say the story is as follows. You have different qualities. At the very same time, you don't exactly have different qualities. You have different stages of wheat being sold for different amounts of money. We all know the new one is four. The old one is three. Now, in this case, four is less than three. It's not my bad math, no. Arba means you can buy. You understand why it's less. You can buy more for, right? You can buy four for one shekel and not three for one shekel. So it's cheaper than four, yeah? You can buy four for 10 shekels. Yeah. No, 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 wait, not wait. No, 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 no. No, no, we're talking about price here, price. The new wheat, the new wheat is not as good as the old wheat. Wheat has to get a little bit, or not too old with the mice, we had in that man, but the wheat has to get a little bit crunchy, a bit hard, so you can grind it well. I know that from the Gemara, yeah? So the new wheat wasn't yet aged enough, right? So the new wheat, you can, again, I'm repeating, you can buy, let's say, four kernels of wheat for one, which is cheaper than three for one, right? Obviously. So the chadoshos are cheaper. The yeshonos, misholosh, at the same time in the market, they have new wheat and old wheat. Okay, fine. But stay there. Now, one would say, wait a second. Let's say I want to buy new wheat, right? I want to buy new wheat. Today, the new wheat is worth four. When it will get old, it will actually be worth more. And will be worth sholosh, meaning I can buy three for the sale. It will be more expensive. And poiskin, you're not allowed to pass. You, you can't set the price and say, hey, 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 you can't play the game here, right? Obviously. And poiskin, you can't say, I want this wheat, which I know will get older and more expensive. I want to buy it now because look, your neighbor, I will tell to the merchandise, yeah, your neighbor has the old wheat. And he sells it for for uh, for uh, for a three, right? So maybe I'll set it now and four and get more expensive later. It doesn't work. The game doesn't work over here. Why? In other words, normally we say, listen, you don't have any schoyer at all. I know you will get the schoyer later, but because your neighbor has, it's good enough for both you and I, the fact that the neighbors have it. Here it doesn't help. Why? Because here it's not stop. I don't care that your neighbor has other ones. Because the ones that the neighbor has are what? They are old. Uh, because they're old and they don't reflect on the new. In other words, the fact is, Lamaisa, that new one will become better. You, you will become better. So you're now buying something that will conceptually, inter- intrinsically, become better later on. Because now it's new and therefore not so good and cheap. It will become expensive. The older it is, the more expensive it is. So therefore, there you can set the price based on the neighbor. The neighbor has different quality of produce altogether. The same idea now applies to a bit of a different thing, but similar. What about the following case? Yeah. There are two types, there are two uh, levels of quality of wheat. Leket. You know about leket? Who gets leket? The poor people, very good. So let's say you have a kind of wheat which is sold, but maybe the anim, the poor people, they make business out of the tzedakah that they get, or maybe it's a kind of wheat which is many times mixed with other, which is not pure. They look at, they, they garner, they, they collect whatever they have, right? They get whatever they get, they collect whatever they collect, and many times the wheat is mixed up with chiffon, with rye, which is not as quality as wheat, at least back then, maybe before the health food stores. So Lamai said this impure wheat, yeah, is worth four, not worth four. You can get four for, let's say, one shekel. Well, Chol Odom, Mishalosh, the Chol Odom, the regular people are not poor, who buy and sell normally in the shop, pure, nice wheat, they get more expensive. 
they get three for one shekel. They get less. Okay. They basically have now in the market two types of market. You have the poor people. They sell the cheaper and they sell what? Lower quality. And the higher quality goes for every person. So far, so good. Oh, let's say I want to buy now from a regular guy. I want to buy from a regular guy high quality wheat, right? And I say, listen, I want to buy now. I want to pay you less. I want to pay you, let's say, one shekel, not a one and a half, because why? Your neighbor has one shekel. Your neighbor, the Oni, for his low quality, gets one shekel. And the difference in quality is not that high. It's a bit less. Lamaisa, somebody else has a similar schoira for less money. So is that called Yotsu Ashar? Says the Mishnah, says the, the Gemara, no. And Poiskin, Atsu Yotsu Ashar Luloiket Velamoicher. It says, no, no way. Obviously, it's a different quality. As the Gemara will say later on, you can't reflect from your sug aleph on your neighbor's sug bet. Unless the loiket and the moicher somehow even the prices, let's say government gets involved or something, and they, how do you say, they equalize the prices? They set the price. They set the price equally for, I don't know, like sub subsidy, whatever. They subsidize and they say it's all the same. They equalize all the prices. Unless we have that, and then you can say, listen, you don't have the wheat, but your neighbor, the only has wheat worth the same, then it works. But if your neighbor has is not worth the same as what I'm trying to buy from you, that doesn't work. As Igmar will explain later, but I'm just already telling you now. Amab Nachman. Rav Nachman, though, agrees, but talks about a different Lekuda. Which means, let's say I want to buy from Lekutos. I want to buy from a poor person, low quality wheat. Then, although he doesn't have, but his other anim has, then it's okay. Maybe he, they will also, the price of the cheap wheat will also go up. That's nothing to do with fresh or not fresh. Tam, everything goes up in price, right? We all know that. So within the low quality market, we can play the game of you don't have, but your neighbor has, and that's good enough. Omel Rov Rav Nachma, now Rov comes and he basically brings everything together. The first case and the second one. Again, the first case we spoke about, I want to buy in a nice, normal good quality Makolet, and I'm telling the Makolet guy, oh, you don't have it by you? I'll give you the money now, because the low quality Makolet of the poor guys, the Kupa, they sell it, yeah? And I want to set the price this way, even though it will go higher. That we cannot do, right? So Schenken, from low quality to low quality, I can tell the low quality, it's dock organization that sells for cheap and cheaper prices and cheaper quality, lower quality, the other organization that works together. Omer Rav Nachman, Maishna Loiket, what's the difference? The says as follows. The loiket, why can I go to one poor guy and tell him I can buy the same from your other poor guy? So I'll give you the money. And you can what? You can yazif. What's yazif? You can borrow. You can in one instant borrow the wheat from your friend, even if you don't have the money right now, and pay him later. So because it's so available for merchant number one to get it from merchant number two. So therefore, it's considered, as we said before, it's ki'ilu yeshloi. It's so available for one merchant to go to the other to do business. No, give me the wheat now. I'll pay you soon. Oh, very good. If so, balabais nami yosef milokoit. Wait a second. The balabais can also borrow from the poor guy. It's true that it's not the same quality, but in the Havamina, we think, why are you telling me that the different qualities are so far apart? And if I gave who? I gave Mr. Balabais a nicer guy, fancy guy, who usually sells the, the more expensive, I tell him, give me the cheap, because if you want, you can, you can physically, technically, get lower quality cheap from your neighbor and give it to me now. Again, it's not it's not such a non-chidosh here. Let me explain again. I go to Macaulay of the, reg not rich, regular, nice, comfortable, air-conditioned Macaulay in Rama Aleph. They have nice uh, wheat, let's say, wheat bix yeah, cereal, yeah, and I say, I don't have cereals today? Ah, I'll give you cash now or credit card now and, and charge my credit card and give me a few good boxes in a month. And give me the price that the poor guy next to you has, the one from the stock organization. Ah, it's not the same quality, but you could borrow. The Macaulay could borrow from the poor guy and give me the poor quality thing. So maybe I'll set on the poor quality and eventually get the good quality. Why don't we say that? Well, for two obvious reasons. Omerle, reason number one. Balabais zile be milsel milokoit. 
the Baal Abayis is pas nicht. It's below his dignity to go and borrow from the poor guy. We're high-quality shop, high-end shop. We're not going to get this choyra. It's a shame for me to knock on the door of the stock organization and say, uh, I'm stuck out of, you know, out of stock. And somebody came to me, could you lend me your low quality? He wouldn't do it. Technically, wouldn't do it. People only go for the same level, same economic level. And therefore, since it's not technically going to be done, Emela, no. If I gave you money now, you will not actually go to the poor neighbor and ask for the low quality. Iboy Seima, and that's a very obvious answer, the second answer. Mante Yaiv Zuzel Balabais, the one who gave money for the Balabais, why did he give him money? A Peri Shapiri Yoiv. What Shapiri? Beautiful. He wants to give him good quality. In other words, Ma'ina Shmital Arsinai. It's not the same. What are you talking about? In other words, I want your high quality Amerikai, serial Amerikai. I want to buy from you the high quality. You stuck without it now. It's not going to help if you go and get the low quality cereal from your neighbor. It's not what I'm looking for. It's chalk and cheese or apples and oranges, Marquesha, right? In other words, if it's the same quality product and I want the same quality, I don't care about the quality, then you can say. But if I go to the high end store, I want high end product, right? And mainly, if he could go, even if he would go below his dignity and borrow from the neighbor, it's irrelevant. It's not the quality I'm looking for. And therefore, you can't say it's chilo in my pocket already. What's in my pocket? That low quality cereal in my house, eh, it's not what I'm looking for, Bechlal. So you can't say it's kilo all done already. You know, it's not all done. And therefore, in this case, it's not going to work. So again, the Bechitz is very simple. It all goes by quality. If you go to low quality store, yeah, and you say, I want X, they don't have it, but other low quality stores do have it, the Bakasha, we can play the game. It's kilo all, you know, went from one merchant to the other to my pocket. It's all done. Let's go and set the deal, fix the price. And later I'll get it for less. A shame can, if it's different qualities, if I'm going to a normal, nice, high-end store and he could have gotten low quality, no. First of all, he won't do it. And secondly, it's not what I'm looking for. And therefore, yeah, you have to work in the same price range and same quality when you play the game of Yotza Hashav. Vaita. Omar of Sheishes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Omar of Sheishes. Oh, now comes a new question. Can one borrow? Can one borrow using the kula of shah? Yeah. In other words, the question is as follows. One second. Gordon. I'm reading Rashi inside now. Anishamati. Rashi brings you two explanations. Rashi himself says as follows. I heard, says Rashi, Ain Loivin were five. Five lines from the bottom of Rashi lines. In love in Mois Vader Khalva, let's say a person doesn't want to buy wheat or potato or butter or shoes or computers. He wants cash. He wants to borrow money, Bader Khalva, to borrow money. Almenas. And what's the what's the catch here? Shimloy Ashalam Khamois Adzman Ploini. Let's say I fail to pay. How do you call it? A default? Yeah, I, yeah. Default with the payment. Then if up until a certain time I don't pay you, interesting. I'll give you fruit like now's rate, which is good for you. Let's say I'm a merchant. I'm not selling you fruit, actually. I'm borrowing money from you outright. It's one step towards the dangerous ribis area, right? Why did you keep saying, all oh, this is the Rabbonon? We're not borrowing. Ask any person who doesn't learn Ezu Neshech, yeah? When I buy, I prepay, it's not called a loan, right? I want to get my wheat. I'm fantasizing about this delicious wheat for five months. I gave the money on Tishrei, hoping that on Odor I'll get the wheat for Pesach, for Purim, whatever, right? And Lamai, I prepaid. That's not Mamish alone. Now we are, you know, we're warily stepping, taking one step for, forward. What happens if I actually said the L word? I want to take a loan. I'm a merchant, yeah? I want to borrow from you 100000 and I'll pay you 100000 But if I default, yeah, then I'll do something nice to you. If I don't pay you the cash up until Rosh Chodesh Nisan, then I'll give you what? The rate of now, yeah? I'll give you fruit. I'll give you a good price for the fruit. You know that my apples and tomatoes are amazing in my vegetable store, right? 
in the green grocer and I'll give you everything as if from the price of five months ago, right? So, continues Rashi, that's a bit scary. When we spoke about what that was okay. Why? What's Mekach Memkar? The Raisa the Rabbonon? The Rabbonon. The Rabbonon. It's not also, it's a question. Yeah, maybe when I mentioned the halvo, again, although Yotza Ashar, remember, other merchants do have it now. So there is Yotza Ashar. I can easily buy you the apples and tomatoes now by my neighbor, but I'm borrowing in Tishrei. At the beginning of the season, I borrow money. I'm a greengrocer. I borrow money when everything is cheap. And my neighbors have cheap stuff, good quality for cheap, yeah? And I don't have... Can you please lend me money? I'm a businessman. I need the money now. I'll give you money. It's a loan. That's a question. In other words, did they allow you to actually use that mechanism of Yotza Ashar when it's a loan? Or did they only allow Yotza Ashar? Excuse me. No. Did they only allow it when it's a Mecca Humemkar? When the verbal agreement and all the feel about it is about buying and selling, not borrowing. I'm selling you a respectable man. I sell you oranges and apples and potatoes and tomatoes. Yeah, I'm selling you now for the price. Uh, I'll, I'll give it to you in five months for the price of now. Yeah, it's not mamish alone. That's allowed by Yotra Shah. Do we allow Yotra Shah also when it's mamish money for money? I'm borrowing 100,000 and I'll give you 100,000. And if I don't give you cash, then I'm giving you that. Yeah, nice fruit in five months for the old price. Is that also okay? On one hand, I would say, oh, don't I sir. On the other hand, you can say, listen, Yotza Ashar. Yotza Ashar can work maybe even for the Raisa. It's a question. I'd like to continue, Rashi, but we're very pressed for time. Nice. Although you, you, ah, you're saying it's not called Kotsuts. Nice. Said very nice. Borch is saying something nice. Oh, didn't raise your hand, but fine. You're saying good. There is a concept. It's it's not mamish doraisa because it's not ktsutsa. That's what you're saying, possibly, because we don't know. Nice idea. I didn't look into it, but I, I hear what you say. So now let's just continue. So Avsheshes at this point says, "Ain lo even l'shar No, hey, um, the line starts with Rav Huna. Yeah, the the one, two, three, four, five. Six, there are three Rav Hunas here. <laughs> They're about uh, eight lines from the bottom. Rav Huna ain lo even l'shar shabashuk. Says Rav Huna. If it's alvo, it's a loan, even though other merchants have it and it's stable and it's nice, alvo, the raisa, you can't do that. Omel Rav Yosef Barcham and Rav Sheshes, the Amel Rav Yosef Barab and Rav Sheshes, Umiyam Ravuna Hachi, is that so? Did Ravuna really say that? Did Ravuna really tell you that a loan is not allowed to be taken even though Yotza Ashar? I'll, I'll show you otherwise. Rabbi Mine Me Ravuna. I remember people ask the very same Ravuna who, talk, who you talk about, Hani Bnei Beirav. The yeshiva guys, the yeshiva students, the yazfi betishrei, they borrow money in tishrei, the example I gave you, they borrow money in tishrei, upari betavis, and they porea, they give back the money, they return the loan in tavis, and it's the same condition you spoke about, and the condition is that if we falter, what are we going to do? We default, what's going to happen? We'll give you good price for, for the merchandise. Shari or osir, is that allowed or not allowed? Omar lehu, and he told them, yeah, since you can buy chita wheat in the towns nearby Pompedisa called Hini and Shili. Hini and Shili are different small villages near Pompedisa. It's available in other places. Ibai, if they want to, Zabri Pali Mikoran. They could have sold, they could have bought with this money that they borrowed in Tishrei, they could have right away gotten him the schoyer from the merchants, from the other neighbors in the neighboring towns. And Porea straight away. So what do you see, right? You see outright that Ravuna says it's allowed. The same mechanism, the same idea of if I don't have the schoyer, I can get it from a neighbor, it's kilo all done. It's just the technicality until it gets to your place. So you see it works even though they borrowed. They didn't buy the borrowed. You see it's good. So Ravuna seems to be contradicting himself. And says, Gemara, no. So the Ravuna and Loivin. Originally, Ravuna thought you're not allowed to. Ravuna thought because it's a halvo here. By the way, I'm not sure it's the Orisa. Borch may be right. There could be other reasons here. I'm not sure it's the Orisa. So I'm being a bit uh, careful here. Yeah, I'm going to look into it more tomorrow. But Lamaisa, Ravuna says, in the Havamina, Ravuna said originally said, no, borrowing? He said the borrowing word that you cannot do, even though your next door neighbor has it. 
כיוון דשומר להא דומר רב שמואל בר חייא אמר בלוזו לא הבין. once רב הונא heard רב שמואל בר חייא quoting רב בלוזו that said that in this very same case you are allowed to borrow because why? because other neighbors or other neighboring towns other merchants have this choyra אומר יונמי לא הבין בקיצר רב הונא changed his mind רב הונא heard people who he believed were greater than him saying the halacha is that that trick of Yotza Ashar, of other people in the market or other nearby markets, they have it available. I can get it from them very easily, even though it's a alvo, and alvo contains that element of fixing the old price. He said you're allowed to do that. That's Rav Huna Lamaskona. Thank you very much. I do have tomorrow, Blin Eder, for tomorrow I'll have to prepare a few halachos. Halach al in the Mishnah with Rav Yuda, and also the one we had in the previous year. Thank you very much. Thank you for everyone here in Abba Shalom. Thank you for everyone, YouTube and Torani Time. Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you.